Hey guys, it's Lion here with Hobbies of Man. Once again, and today we're gonna be talking about uh, the One Piece live action arc three or episodes five and, five and six. Uh, and these were awesome episodes. I love these. I think these were probably uh, the strongest set of episodes so far. I mean, I think episodes three and four are the weakest. Then episodes one and two, and then episodes five and six are are at the top of my list right now. Although I have watched the whole series, and I do think that episodes seven and eight are slightly better because they finally pay off the series and they actually close the series very nicely. But we're going to talk about that in a different episode uh, of this, uh, you know, of this review. So let's get back to episodes five and six. It starts with Garp fighting Luffy, uh, a very small clash, very similar to the clash they have at the end of uh, Ennis Lobby at the post Ennis Lobby arc. And again, I've seen a lot of people complain about the fact that this, uh, you know, having the Garp storyline from so far later brought back here is not good because it spoils One Piece. Again, I don't really think there's anything to spoil here. Like, yes, you don't get the reveal at the time that it was initially made, but at the same time, that reveal is not actually directly important to the plot. The only reason it happens then is to hype up things that happen later. The story could easily have been or that part of the story, the Garp reveal, could have easily been happening at any time before that, right? It just happened there because that's when Oda finally thought it was relevant to introduce it. But if Oda had, you know, uh, you know, talks with, with, with the guys that made this, and actually I think that Oda didn't want this storyline here, uh, but I think that even though it's probably, it might have been better if it wasn't here, the fact that it was actually works well for me. I like it. I think it's good. And I think that it makes... Uh, no difference whether the storyline is here or at the end of, of Ennis Lobby where it was initially because it changes nothing. It makes the story still work and it makes the story have that kind of secondary plot line that is so essential to premiere style television, right? So I thought it was good. I liked it. It, start, it, it starts us uh, a flashback for Garp and Luffy interacting as children. I would have really liked to see him throw Luffy with the Dan uh, and maybe introduce Sabo and, and Ace, but... Uh, maybe that's a thing that's going to happen next season if we do get the, se the second season uh, because it would have been nice to see them but overall it was also good to see garp and luffy interacting with luffy being a kid and i liked it i thought it was fun it was interesting uh and i liked it eventually luffy manages to escape and garp is actually kind of happy about this he thinks that it's fun uh he laughs a lot uh, although the thing is that his his change from stoic you know badass garp to funny garb, to like laughing maniacally garb, is a little bit like, not rough, but it's a little bit unhinged. And although that works, I think it would have been better to have our garb be just a tiny bit less serious throughout the series, uh, so that his transition to laughing garb would have been easier to digest for, for watchers, right? Uh, because it did come off like him being unhinged all of a sudden, right? So yeah, but you know, it is what it is, it's fine. Then we finally find the Baratier uh, after Luffy and crew escape uh, through the mist. They managed to get towards the Baratier. They managed to get introduced to Sanji. And I really like Sanji's introduction with Zeph. I really like that. I think it works very, very nicely. It does give me like Gordon Ramsay, Hell's Kitchen type vibes. Uh, and it also gives me like, you know, cooking show vibes that I like a lot. It's very, very nice. And it works out very well to introduce us to this father-son duo that are just so ridiculous, right? So yeah, then we get a scene where Garp actually calls Mihawk, which is a really interesting change uh, because it gives us the uh, Don Krieg interaction without forcing us to interact with him via the crew. So I like that. I think Mihawk's introduction was badass where we see him taking this call as he murders, he murks, completely destroys the Don Krieg pirates. And I like that. I thought it was very, very nicely done. So far, Mihawk and Buggy are probably the most interesting, uh, like, in, in, in well done in, like uh, adaptations. I like everyone else. I think everyone else is good, but I love Mihawk and Buggy so, so much. They're so, so cool. Uh, then Luffy and crew have been eating, and Luffy actually gives an IOU to uh, Zeph, and this actually uh, leads to Luffy being the chore boy at the Baratier, and he's told you had to work here for a year, but of course that's not going to happen because uh, things happen, and uh, Zoro, Usopp, and Nami are hanging out as Luffy is washing dishes for the night. Uh, that develops their connection. I get to see uh, a very fun interaction here. We get to see Zoro and Nami actually develop their relationship a lot, more so than um, I feel like we got originally, and I like that a lot. I think it's good because they're slightly antagonistic, but also slowly developing their relationship. 
very nicely and I like that. I thought it was very well done. Uh, then we have to see Luffy and Sanji chatting about the all blue. We get introduced to Gin, who does the same thing he does in the uh, manga in his initial introduction. And it works very nicely to show you that, you know, Sanji wants to feed people. And I like that a lot. I think it was a very well done. I love Luffy and Sanji's interactions here. I think Sanji is such a different version from the manga, but also still manages to be really in in interesting and lovable and, and, and good. I like him a lot. He's so wholesome here. And I think that works really, really nicely because it's a much better version of that like uh, kind of like person that is very interested in women uh, and him being more in tune with his emotions and clearly developing that uh, is good. I like that. Uh, then we have the big uh, fight uh, at dawn because uh, Mihawk shows up and Zoro challenges him and Luffy doesn't stand in his way. And this actually causes some friction because Nami and Usopp are like, dude, he's gonna die. Like, this is not a good thing. And Luffy's like, dude, I, I can't stop him. He has a dream, he wants to follow it and this is his opportunity. I cannot tell him no. And I like that a lot. They have their fight at dawn. Uh, obviously, um, Zoro loses very clearly. This is basically panel for panel, exactly the same as the manga. And it was so, so good. Uh, Nami then tries to leave, but actually decides not to at the end. She's there to witness Zoro's uh, defeat and then to be part of the people that are trying to heal him and help him. And also uh, helps us a lot to, to get the next part of the story here with episode six, right? So overall episode five was wonderful. I liked it a lot. I thought it was really, really good. And uh, I like how they're handling Nami's relationship with the crew here and how she's like clearly developing uh, attachment to them, but she's trying her best to not do so because she has to betray them, right? So I like that a lot. Uh, then in episode six, we have Zoro uh, taken back to the Mary. Luffy's stuck. He, he, he's like having like a PTSD episode uh, that is really rough for him. And it's really interesting uh, because he has like a very subdued, like panic or anxiety attack that Nami has to snap him out of that I thought was really well done. It also shows that Luffy is serious because he, for the first time ever, he's not hungry. He's not interested in eating. And I thought that was good. Uh, maybe it would have been still out of, I think it is a little bit out of character, but it, it functions very well to show us that something's wrong with Luffy because it has been an established fact in the show, right? So uh, that is a little bit of an out of character moment that helps us connect with the character from the perspective of the show. So I, I'm willing to allow it. I, it's, it's the one thing I, I might want to complain about, but because it functions so well to do what it needs to do, I, I can't fault it, right? So, uh, yeah. So Nami forces Luffy to go to back to the Baratier to look for a doctor to get help. He doesn't really go to where Nami tells him to, but he goes and talks to Zev and Sanji, and they go and administer first aid uh, to Zoro. They actually patch him up with some sutures and then with some fish skin in order to provide him a... Uh, uh, basically like a self-sealing bandage type thing. It's a very kind of cool way of showing you that Seth is not just a cook. He's also a, a captain and a pirate. And, and, and it's very, very good. I like that a lot. Uh, Garp and Mihawk then have a chat. Kobe learns about the relationship between Garp and Lu Luffy. And I think that was also good. However, I think that this could have been the, the, the way that we introduce that Garp is Luffy's grandfather instead of in earlier uh, episodes because... Uh, even though this would have been less impactful because the crew's not there to react to it, it would have been better for the story because now uh, we still have had a lot of tension built up, right? Um, I can't remember who it was. I saw someone mention that uh, the fact that we learn about Luffy uh, and his connection to Garp so early means that there's less tension. And I don't necessarily agree, but I can understand why someone might think that. Um, and I can understand that that is probably a valid criticism that a lot of watchers will have. But uh, I think that it, being having it revealed twice, it was fine. But I think the second time here with, with uh, Kobe being the one that realizes it is good because um, that way the audience knows there's still tension going on because we don't know where it's going to go. Um, but uh, it, it makes the confrontation earlier in the episodes uh, feel much more serious, right? So I think that would have been fine to do, but they decided to do it twice. So I think it's fine. Uh, then uh, Sanji gets his background story as a way to teach Luffy about captainship and, and being a, a leader. And I really liked it. I thought this uh, version of the story was good. It's a little bit different from the manga because in this one, uh, we don't get to see Sanji learn a lesson. Uh, he doesn't go from being someone that's 
frivolous or, or willing to give up on food uh, to someone that never wants to waste it, right? We get to see uh, more of a change in the sense that um, he, he finally realizes that other people care about him. And I think that works, but um, I think it's mostly because the, the function of the story changed to teach something to Luffy. So we don't need to have Sanji learn something as well. So I think that's fine, but it is slightly different and that might bother some people. It didn't really bother me though. Uh, then we get to see that Nami is caring for Zoro. She's reading him Nolan the Liar. And I like this a lot. However, I would have liked to see a little bit of uh, animation showing some of the scenes from Nolan the Liar because um, I think it, I think uh, Harry Potter ruined it for me when the story of the three brother, brothers was explained via an animation because now I want to see that every time we get an in, uh, like an in-world story told. And I really would have loved to see that, maybe actually introducing us to uh, panels from the manga or from the anime just recreated into this kind of animated uh, storytelling. Um, but I think that they didn't do that because we're trying to focus on Zoro and Nami's relationship growing here, where Nami is finally understanding or maybe being willing to the to to deal with the fact that she now has friends she has people that she cares about um and that it hurts her to to see them injured right so yeah she's also really angry with luffy and this is totally fair but um at the same time luffy is just not doing a great job of explaining himself and also i think nami just doesn't want to understand um and so it creates good tension for the show um then Arlong, you know, pulls up to the uh, Baratier. We have a, a lot of interactions here with Arlong and the people that are working at uh, working and eating at the Baratier to show that he is a rather scary individual and to show the difference between humans and um, and fishmen. And I do want to say I actually really like how the fishmen look. Uh, however, there is one slight problem with Arlong, and that is that somehow he is the smallest fishman that we see so far. Like. Uh, Chu and Kurobi are both larger than him. They're taller. And Kurobi specifically looks a lot more built than Arlong. And I think Arlong's actor did a great job. But uh, there, there has to be a way to make him look bigger in post-production. And I, I think they should have gone ahead and tried to do that. But they didn't. However, uh, he is still much larger than Luffy just naturally. So it still looks good when you have Luffy and, and, and Arlong fighting later on in the episode, right? So, yeah, um, Luffy and crew are with Zoro, and then Nami shows up trying to tell him to run, to leave, because Arlong is here, and he is the worst pirate, and he's hunting Luffy, and she doesn't want him to get hurt, right? But Luffy's like, no, that's not how we deal with this. If he's looking for trouble, I'm gonna give him trouble, and we're gonna go and fight him. And so he does, but he's by himself, and so he gets completely destroyed by Arlong. And I like this uh, because it puts Luffy at a low point, However, it makes the fight later a little bit worse, but I'm not gonna talk about that uh, right now because it's not relevant to what we're talking about. But it is important to say that even though this is really, really good at the moment, I think that it doesn't serve the story as well as it could have uh, because of, of the way that Luffy gets trumped so easily, right? So uh, yeah, then uh, Luffy is uh, saved by Nami who gets uh, Arlong to throw him into the water instead of eating him. Uh, in a way so that Luffy has a chance to survive instead of immediately being killed. And then Sanji shows up like an angel from heaven to save Luffy. And I liked it a lot. I think it was really, really good. Uh, I liked that uh, so, so much. Uh, then Sanji and Seth talk. He gets permission to leave. Uh, he's told, you know, staying here is being a quitter and I need you to find the old blue for both of us. And I thought that was a really, really good interaction. I liked it a lot. Uh, Luffy talks to Zoro, who finally comes to, finally, you know, is, is uh, happy to be back with his friends. Uh, Luffy is, of course, so excited for it. And, and Usopp and Sanji are as well. And then they sail away to the Konomi Islands and we get to see uh, Sanji's departure from the Baratier. That was pretty emotional, I liked it. I really enjoy the father-son dynamics in shows. And um, even though I didn't actually cry at all during any of the scenes in the, in the live action compared to how I, I, felt, uh, how I felt in the manga, um, I still think it hit. Like there was moments where I did feel like I was starting to tear up. I just never actually managed to cry about it, but it was really, really good stuff. I really enjoyed uh, how they handled this. I thought it was really, really good. So yeah, overall there was really, really good stuff here. Uh, the difference uh, in, in how Luffy handles being captain is good. I think that's interesting and it's meaningful and it, it works really well for television. 
I really like the the, the Fishman a lot. And uh, of course, Garp and Kobe are still pretty good. I like their relationship developing. And I like the fact that Garp is kind of warming up to Kobe a lot more when he's realizing that Kobe isn't just a follower. That, that there's a certain level of of, of, uh, of of strength of will to Kobe that I think Garp is trying to, 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 to nourish and that he's also interested in because, you know, Kobe and Hemepo basically become his adopted children uh, the same way that, you know, Ace and Sabo and, and, and anyone else that he comes across <laughs> basically become. And um, this is good because now he has a grandson or a child that will follow in his footsteps while he can still have his other grandson that doesn't, right? So overall, really, really good stuff here. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was really well done. Definitely for sure the best episode so far. Uh, and I'll do my review for episodes f uh, seven and eight soon. And then I'll do a series review talking about some of the changes and my feelings about them and how I felt about the series as a whole. But uh, I'll see you guys next episode or next uh, video, whichever one you watch. And thank you guys very much for watching. See you guys later.